Samsung is going to drop the best Apple Studio Display alternative this year. I think it's this year. Dang it, I gotta double check. Well, anyways, I am excited about it. I am so excited because originally I just wanted to make this video even before the this alternative display was gonna come out and just say, hey, if you got the money, like I was gonna give you the okay and say you should buy the studio display. And I was basically gonna give you reasons of why you should just justify buying uh, an Apple studio display. So then the Viewfinity S9 got announced and I thought, cool, Samsung just dropped a cheap Apple studio display alternative. But upon a further inspection, I think it could be more than just that. Because in some ways it fixes the Apple Studio Display. My biggest gripes with the Apple Studio Display are as follows. Number one, the price was just too gosh darn high. Shout out to Flossie Carter. Also, like the power cable, how can, I, like, why? Why did they make the power cable non-removable? That's one of those that doesn't really affect me all the time, but it just feels weird knowing that like the whole system could be destroyed if something happens to that cable. Reason number three, and this is a really big one, this one annoyed me a lot, is the flexibility with it, right? So these, when you buy the Apple Studio Display, you can only use it with your Mac, MacBook, Mac Studio, Mac Mini, whatever, but you can't use it with anything else. Well, I guess you could technically use it with a PC. It's just not optimized for it. Like I think like you can't really control the brightness with the, like there's a lot of weird things if you use it with a PC, but technically you could use it with a PC as far as I know. But what you can't use it for, which what really, really stinks is you can't use it for like a console game, for example. Like I try, I would love to like hook up my Nintendo Switch or my PlayStation and just be able to play that, but it just doesn't work. And it looks like with this new, Samsung Viewfinity S9, you can do that because it does come with an HDMI port and a display port. So like that, that is such a huge win because it's like, it adds so much more value without even doing that much. Before I had this studio display, I actually came from another nice uh, display. I came from a um, LG Ultrafine Ergo. It's the, like, the 32 inch one that you can, um, like it came with a stand that you can rotate and whatnot. And that one, while a nice while it was a nice display, it just wasn't 5K. Look, here's another side note: you you can't get around 5K in my opinion. Like, 5K is on a Mac especially is completely different than 4K. Like, the 4K display I had, I think technically was had a high enough PPI to be considered Retina, um, it, but it it really wasn't in my opinion. Maybe I. I I always felt like I was, it just, it wasn't the same. Um, and I think that's what it was, it was the 5K. Yeah, I, I might be a stickler for that. You might not care about it as as a lot of people, I think most people don't really care about how like they think 4K is sharp enough even on their Mac and that's, I, I am actually envious of you because then you don't have to make these stupid decisions to purchase really expensive monitors. But to my eye, it is not the same thing. There's 5K displays and then there's displays that are not 5K. Um, and of course it, it depends on the size of the display too, but that's, sorry, side note. Last two biggest gripes, um, were the flexibility, which I already mentioned and the stand, like how can you spend 15 to no $1,600 on a nice display without a stand? Now, technically it does have a stand, but you can only kind of like tilt it. You can't really raise or lower it. Um, it just seemed like really like I'm not going to get a stand with this um and i know you can add one and, and it's a nice one to be fair it's a nice one but it's an extra 400 dollars, which just seems ridiculous i would maybe even consider getting that stand as ridiculous as that sounds just because i would want to raise my monitor sometimes but i already have the monitor now without the stand and i don't want to go through the trouble or even pay extra to uninstall what it has now and then put on the upgraded standard so i think that this Samsung Viewfinity S9 will be able to address all my gripes, well, my main gripes, with the Mac Studio, Apple Studio Display. I'm, it might as well be called Mac Studio Display because that's what it is. The Samsung Viewfinity S9 will come with an HDMI, a display port, like I mentioned, so you can hook up your consoles to it or whatever the heck else you would like. It comes with a remote and Samsung Smart TV software, which adds 
a lot of value. So you can, out of the box, without even having a computer or anything, you can have something to do, which I think you have like Netflix on there. And it's just, it's a smart TV as well as a monitor, which is a plus. I think it does. Don't quote me on this one, but I'm pretty sure it comes with a 4K attachable webcam. Um, this is not the biggest deal to me because I don't really use the webcam that much as it is on the studio display, but it comes with one and it's probably going to be a lot nicer than the one that comes on the studio display because the one that comes on the studio display isn't, uh, it's not good, especially for the price. Also, the Samsung Viewfinity S9 comes, <laughs> sorry, I have to look at it every single time because I, I, it's not a catchy name, but the Samsung Viewfinity S9 also comes with a stand and I wrote it, I have like little notes here and I wrote that in all caps because like, who would have thought of that? What a great idea it, that, that a nice expensive monitor comes with a stand. So it comes with a stand that not only just tilts, but raises, lowers, and rotates. And I can't believe I have to say this one, but the Viewfinity S9 also comes with a detachable power cable. I didn't even confirm that one, but they wouldn't do that, right? Samsung, Samsung, you, you wouldn't put a non-detachable power cable in the Viewfinity S9, would you? Please tell me you wouldn't do that. So for those reasons, I think that Samsung is about to release the best Apple Studio display alternative. And I won't even say cheap alternative because I think it's it provides more value in some cases. And in some cases, um, maybe you still wanna stick with the Apple Studio display. And that's what we're gonna talk about next. First things first, I hate to say this because I did have hope that the build quality of the Viewfinity S9, I got it that time, was gonna be really, really good. And it still might be, but it's not gonna be to the level of the studio display. It's just not. There's no specifications that they could put on a sheet that could tell you like how nice this display feels. What's this? Oh, I think that's a microphone. But it's like, just like a Mac, it's like a MacBook, right? The metal is like super soft and like somehow this hinge here feels like super sturdy and fluid at the same time. I don't know how they do it, but they do it. And I just saw, like I said, I had hope that the Samsung S9, no, the Viewfinity S9 was going to be just as good. But I just saw a video that was wobbly. It was showing off the feature that you could actually like rotate it and whatnot, but it was wobbly as it did it. And um, maybe the display itself will be nice, like build quality, because I think it is aluminum, but it's not gonna be to the level of Apple's studio display. I, I, I really don't think it's going to be, just because it wobbles so much. This one is a little bit more confusing because on all the videos I've seen of the Viewfinity S9 5K, it looks pretty glossy, but the official specs say it's matte. And I really enjoy the glossy display on the studio display because I feel that it makes the colors really pop. Another thing that it probably won't be as, I mean, I don't know, this is all speculation, but I highly doubt it's gonna be as good, is the speakers. The speakers on the studio display are, I mean, they're still, like really, they're still, they're still display speakers, but they're the best display speakers you can possibly get. But, I mean, if you put some, if you just connect it to some actual speakers, it's, it's not really gonna matter either way. But if you were looking for that, that's something you'll get with the studio display that I'm I'm somewhat confident you will not get on the Viewfinity S9. Also, a quality microphone. Another thing I really don't use that much, as you can tell, because right now I'm speaking into the camera with no actual microphone. <laughs> um, but yeah, the quality of the microphone, we don't know. The studio displays are supposed to be pretty good. I typically don't use them at all because I, I use actual microphones. But yeah, if that's another thing you're looking for, you're probably not gonna get it. It's probably not gonna be as good on the Viewfinity S9. Now we don't know, right? It hasn't come out, we don't know, but most likely, I, I think, like the speakers, it just won't be as good. One thing that I do use, however, on the Apple Studio display is True Tone. I enjoy True Tone. It like, if you've never used it, it um, it just matches the temperature color-wise of the room that you're in, which is really nice because it just makes everything a little easier on the eye. In my on the eye, in my opinion. If the build quality is just as good on the Viewfinity S9 5K, um, I I really hope so. I hope it is, but one thing that I feel like can be confirmed from this video I just saw is that it will have wobble. You know, wobble on a desktop monitor isn't necessarily a good thing. The last thing, in general, we just don't know how good it's going to be to use in a like real world environment. For example, 
the viewing angles. The viewing angles, I think, I mean, Samsung makes really, really good displays. So I feel like this one may, you know, I feel like Samsung should nail the viewing angles. But just for an example, I bought the studio display. I loved it. I thought it was, a, I knew it was way too expensive, but I, it was hard to say it wasn't worth it because I really enjoy it and I still enjoy it to this day. I really like using it makes me happy to use it. Now I wanted to buy another, because I like having dual monitors, I wanted to buy another high pixel density display. That's 5K. And the only other one that there was was this, uh, the Studio 32 inch, it's not called the Studio, but the XDR display, which is way too expensive for me, and the LG um, 5K, 27 inch 5K display that Apple sold, um, but it was still made by LG. Now, they were, all the reviewers were saying, oh, this is the same, this is the same quality display, it just comes with a cheaper build, look, I have it right here. I should have just been showing you, this is my studio, actually that's the video I was watching. And then this is the 4K ultra fine, I mean, sorry, 5K, 27 inch ultra fine display that everybody was saying, oh, this is the same, this is the same as this, this is the same as this, it's the same quality. Yeah, it's 5K, it's bright, but it's not the same. Let me see if I can show you. My main gripe with it is the viewing angles. Like that's one thing that I you wouldn't think about because spec for spec it pretty matches up the same, right? They both have the same amount of brightness. They're both 5K. They're both color accurate. Yada yada yada. But the viewing angles, especially because I have the LG monitor off to the side, it's especially prevalent. But the the viewing angles aren't as good as a studio display. Let me see if I can show that on camera. Let's look at the corner of this monitor. Like it looks pretty good. It looks fantastic. But if you start turning to the side, you see how like the blacks completely start getting faded, right? But let's see this little dark corner on the studio display. When I go and go at it from an angle, it's still, the, the blacks don't get completely crushed like they do over here. That's probably seems like a minor thing to most people, but it does matter to me. And especially, you know, to, it should to you, especially if we're spending this much money on a display. So that's, that just goes to show one of the like everyday use things that probably won't show up on a spec sheet. I'm excited for this monitor. I would have way like this LG display is still very expensive and I would have way rather have had the option to buy the uh, the new Viewfinity S9 display because it, I would have had 5K, I would have had a really bright screen, I would have had an actual stand that I could like adjust, you know, vertically or whatnot, um, come with the actual display, and I could connect my Nintendo Switch, you know, or my PlayStation to play some games on it too, and it's not just limited to just the Mac. And I could all, I actually have a PC I don't really use as much. A part of that is because it doesn't work that well with my displays, so like that's another thing I could have done. The Viewfinity S9, is a really good option because it's still bright, it's still 5K, it's still, you know, it's gonna be a really quality display and you could connect it to your gaming consoles, your Mac and your PC. Like if you have a situation, which I used to have, where you can like, where you want to hook up multiple things, you can do that on this display and it's gonna be a really, really nice display. So, um, in some ways it's better than the Apple Studio display, in some ways, we still have to find out. How well is the Viewfinity S9 display going to work with Mac OS? Um, what's it going to be like to use day to day? We don't know, but I have high hopes for it. Um, like I said, in some ways it's better, in some ways it's probably not going to be as good, but I think it's going to be better in very meaningful ways that are going to matter to more people. Like the fact that you can connect other things to it other than a Mac. Anyways, those are just my thoughts. If you liked the video, don't forget to like it. If you want to see more, please subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out, everyone.